Um, I want to start by saying thank you very much uh, for coming here tonight, spending your evening, getting involved in the democratic process. Uh, it, it's really important and, and we welcome that and I encourage you, get you, your neighbours, get out to vote. Thank you for being part of this. There's lots of stuff that came out. Part of what I really enjoy about these evenings is you get a chance to understand what's important, important to your citizens. And you get a chance to find out when we do now at election time. But obviously it's important that we continue to get out through and listen every day to what people have. And it's kind of fun. One of the things that happens um, is I take my uh, girls, uh, we go swimming about 3.30. Uh, they take swimming lessons at 4. The mayor goes sits in the hot tub at the Crystal Pool. I volunteered. Um, and it's funny that with Crystal Pool now at 4 o'clock is the mayor's open hot tub. Uh, and we get a chance to talk about many things. You know, well, let's talk a little about some of the claims here. Western communities, ah, you know, it's their problem with congestion. You know, I remember talking to Minister Lund and he said, well, why don't we just move all the head offices out of the downtown out to Langford and then we don't have to put the light rail in. I'm going, that doesn't work for me, Minister. Um, let's recognize that we need to protect, protect downtown. Let's recognize that we do uh, need to look at uh, LRT, but I support what everybody else has been saying, whether it's myself or John Luton or even the, the chamber. We want an independent business case to make sure the numbers are right. But we also need to understand that we're going to spend $250 million doing business as usual, doing buses. And you can do more buses, but that doesn't pull them out of traffic. It's the congestion. It doesn't make them run faster. So you either need to look at a dedicated bus lane or an LRT. And we went on to talk to the people. So if we can get business as usual, paying for buses that we would do over the next 20 years for $250 million, then why wouldn't we, if it's a sound business case, invest that $250 million and get light rail. With all that that brings with that, a great accomplishment, reducing the greenhouse gases, we know it's cheaper to operate. Those are things we need to take a look at. Policing. The problem with policing, and I'll say this, there's no, we have to police the core. We are the core. Um, and same with taxes. There are costs that we uh, take on as the core city uh, that we have to pay for. Every protest seems to start at Centennial Square and it down in the legislature. Current one didn't stay where it is. Um, you know, but we take on all those, those core expenses. And so, yes, we need to look more. How can we start regionalizing our policing? And the challenge has been put out there to the Shirley Bond to say, why don't we regionalize all of the specialized services? Everybody can keep their patrols. They can have little patches, their badges. Everybody feel like they're in control. But let's look for those efficiencies because criminals don't know. Um, criminals don't know borders. It's stuff that we need to work on. But I'm very clear. We've given our best proposal to Esquimalt. We will release it as soon as we can. And you will see that we've done everything that we can to keep community-based policing. But I'm not going to subsidize Esquimalt. Uh, and that's going to be important. I will stand up for Victorians. You know, and people have said, you know, what about the, the park space on, on the boulevard? We went out to public tender. We asked for the businesses and the private businesses to give us their best cost, and they came in higher. And our local guys, our union guys, our guys in the, pro in, in the city of Victoria said, let us shot. And they did it. They did it cheaper, and they did it on time. And I'm proud of the fact that our people, that the men and women that work for the city of Victoria can deliver that way. And I'm proud of the fact that we're investing in boulevards and parks. You know, when we do Fisherman's Wharf, when we do Cridge Park, when we do the, the entrance way on Pandora, we do the entrance way on Craigflower, don't even been over there. We had bike lanes, we had parks. This is some of the cool stuff that cities should do. It speaks to the quality of life. How do we enhance our communities and our neighborhoods? It's part of what we need to do. You need to do it in a measured way. You need to make sure that you can afford to do it. Those are the conversations that we will continue to have over the next three years. What are the projects that we have to do? What are the projects do we need help on? And what are the projects we're not going to do? But we're going to do it together. And I thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. It's great to see so many smiling faces. I look forward to the day when we can... Um, I look forward to the day when we can be having meetings like this in the Memorial Arena. Right? Thousands of people paying attention. My name is Steve Filipovic, and I'm running uh, to be your, a real alternative for change. I have a dream team, Ben Isaac, Rose Henry, Lisa Helps, Sheila Goodgen, John Turner, Linda McGrew, Philippe Lucas, and Jeff Young. You'll notice there's only two incumbents on that list, so talk about it amongst yourselves. 
And um, I think you should be supporting a lot of these candidates. They're really good people, and they will form a good, strong, independent city hall where we can get things done. Common sense has been missing at City Hall for too long. I will work to reinstall it as the main mechanism for problem solving. I will create several access points for relevant information and stimulate debate about the directions we should pursue. I will fund the community centres to a level enabling them to facilitate genuine community building and initiatives. I will create dignity villages for those who have been left out in the cold for too long. I will shift the spending of our $200 million budget towards those changes in our community that we've been in need of for quite some time. And I will make sure all those shifts are done in an open and accountable manner, in the light of day, and with plenty of opportunity for all people to chime in. I will place more demands on those in leadership roles in the city, and I will supply more support to the workers who provide the results. My name is Steve Filipovic, and I'm looking for your support on November 19th. We do have a crisis in our democracy. There's 48,000 people that don't play this game. And it's a silly game because we all lose because of their inactivity. So over the next couple of weeks, I'm asking you to reach out into your community, find people that don't vote, and encourage them to vote. Uh, check out my website. There's a lot of things there that could provide us hope for the future. Thank you very much. My name is Steve Filipovic. Well, thank you for coming out tonight, and, and thanks for all the questions. They were good questions. I'm going to sum up and say again, I'm not a politician. I'll tell you what you need to hear, as opposed to what you want to hear. My wife is not happy, and I'll tell you. She would prefer that I not be doing this, but bless her heart, she supports me. We're not isolated from the rest of the world. We're dealing with some very difficult financial situations. We've got to get our own financial act together. You know, tax increases of 7%, we can't sustain that. We can't be cutting the way we have been. And believe me, you know, if you want to go to the financial statements, uh, the audited financial statements for the last number of years, KPMG did them, there's a 20% cut there, whether you like it or not. You can go to the budget documents this year and see a 40% cut in uh, grants to the city. Now, some organizations did get, didn't get hit, but some really got hit. We can't remain isolated. We talk about amalgamation. We can't expect the rest of the municipalities to come together with us until we get our financial act in order. They keep looking at our figures and saying, we can't afford to join with you right now. We can spend our money more wisely. We can fix it. But if we delay another three years, we're going to be in real tough shape, believe me. Being promised 3.96% this year and getting delivered 7%, I can't imagine what they're going to give you next year. I love this city. It's a gem. We have so much to work with. Let's not squander it. Because it is being squandered right now in so many ways. Oh, we're trying to do good things, but we're not paying attention to the bottom line. In summary, we can have our cake and eat it too if we learn how to spend our money wisely. But we have too many on council that are not paying attention to the bottom line or they're not prepared to focus on the issues that really count. Miniature goats Give me a break. At the top of the agenda, and at the end of the agenda, we leave the crystal pool and fire hall discussion when most people have left or fallen asleep. It's wrong. We can't be afraid to face these tough issues. In summary, we from Oak and Victoria will work. I want to correct the financial situation of this city. Linda McGrew, she wants to deal with the environmental issues. We've got a lot of infrastructure that needs to be replaced. And bless Linda, she's going to help us do it correct. Suki Lali, he wants to bring back downtown to where it should be. A regional center, a, fer a preferred place to live, play, shop, and work. And Aaron Hall, he wants to bring the sense of community back into our neighborhoods. It's quickly eroding. I am asking for your vote on election day for both me and the other candidates that represent Open Victoria. Let's open up Victoria again. Thank you.